Hello everyone and welcome once again to your very own channel Easy and Effortless Economics. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about VAT and mod VAT. So let's start with the lecture. First, let's understand what is VAT. What VAT basically stands for Value Added Tax. It means the tax is paid at every stage. It's not only paid at the final stage of consumption or at the final stage when it reaches to the consumer. It is paid at all the different stages. So here, let's understand what does it says. Value added tax is assessed incrementally and it is calculated on the amount by which the value of any product or service increases at each of the stages of the supply chain from production distribution to the point of sale. So till the time of manufacturing from the start of manufacturing till the time of distribution during all these stages the tax is being paid. So this is your value added tax means VAT. VAT has replaced sales tax. So let's see what is the difference between the two. In sales tax, the tax was on the end consumer of a product that we know. In VAT, the tax is payable at each step of the supply chain where some value is added to the product until it reaches the end customer. So in this what happened? The sales tax, it is paid at last whereas VAT is paid at throughout the stages. Now, let's understand it with the help of an example. For example, there is a thread manufacturer who buys cotton from the dealer. So now the thread manufacturer is going to pay the cost of the cotton to the dealer along with the tax. Means he is going to pay cost of the cotton plus the tax that the dealer has to pay to the government. Next steps, the thread manufacturer then makes thread out of the cotton that he has bought. So now he is going to sell this to weaver. So what will happen now? Now the weaver will pay the cost of the thread along with the tax that the thread manufacturer will pay to the government. So this is how it works that at every stage you have seen that at every stage the tax is being paid. So this is the example of your VAT. So I guess this concept has made it much clear to you what actually VAT is. Now comes the modified version of VAT is known as modified value added tax or it is popularly recognized as mod VAT. What it is, let's see. It says that mod VAT stands for modified value added tax. It is a scheme for allowing relief to final manufacturers on the excise duty borne by the suppliers. In respect of goods manufactured by them, it was introduced in India in 1986. It basically says the purpose of implementing or the purpose of uh, modvet is very clear that to reduce the burden of the manufacturers instead of putting the uh, burden of tax at every level they made it clear that at the final stage it will be paid and basically a concession is being provided to the manufacturers basically it is a concessional scheme this a uh, schemes or uh, this mod VAT, this tax actually aims at providing the concession or support to the manufacturers so that they can be saved from the clutches of paying taxes at every level here we talk about excise duties. What is an excise duty? Excise duty is a type of tax which is imposed on the goods which are produced within the country. So moderate is applicable to the commodities which are produced within the countries and for the commodities which are produced outside the country for that the modified version of moderate is SENVAT which is central value added tax. Let's have a look at the objectives. To avoid repeated payment of duties from raw material stage to the final product stage. Like I have told you that instead of making a payment at all the stages, it waits for the final stage and then whatever concessions are required, it can be done accordingly. Second, to avoid payment of tax at different stages of excise duties that to save the manufacturers from making payment at all the stages. And it is to simplify and rationalize the tax procedure to make the tax procedure rationalized. So now let's see how it works. The objectives are clear to us. Now let's see how it works. For example, here you can see the final product is electric fan, the value of which is 800 and the duty that is going to be paid is 10%. So first we are going to see the individual or the per unit duty that is going to be paid for raw material you can see here we have three sections raw material consumable and packing material so for the raw material we can see the per unit cost is 25 and 20 for electric motor and sheet 
and for the consumable we have paints plastic cover all for and cartons 5 to 5 individual cost we have and then packing material we have cello tape gum so this is how the individual cost is decided it is decided that this is the duty this is not the cost this is the duty that is going to be paid on each of the unit and when we calculate the cu uh, duty it is coming 59 if you calculate this it will come to 59 and the total that we have already seen was 80 so the next diagram it says duty payable on final product 80 duty already paid on inputs 59 and now the actual duty paid the duty that is going to be paid by the manufacturer will be 21 so this is the purpose of modvad that instead of putting the burden of paying the all of the amount at once or instead of uh, saving them from paying heavy amount at one stage they can get the concession and ultimately they have to pay just 21 the rest of the amount has already been paid so the at last what they are paying they are paying 21 so this is clear now let's have a look at the advantages basically this modvat is advantageous only for the producers who are living in the country or you can say who are using the products or the raw material which are available within the country so it says this scheme benefits those producers who use indigenous raw materials and intermediate goods rather than the producers who use imported material then it helps in shifting the effective burden of excise duties away from inputs and onto the final product means it saves the total value from individual uh, what you can say from inputs and it ultimately puts on the final product and even on that concessions are allowed it is expected to curb tax evasion it will check the tax uh, it will check the excise evasion as the credit of input cannot be claimed unless production of goods are displayed to the excise authorities so what the claims and the excise claims so you can see the concession that can be asked by the manufacturer only at the time when the final product is ready not in between a simplified procedure for obtaining tax concessions have been laid down so these are some of the advantages of your modvat now let's have a look at the drawbacks Uh, the first drawback is says is that it's really difficult it requires a stringent procedure and it requires a huge structure to set up this so the implementation of modvad requires a sound administrative structure secondly it may encourage unscrupulous traders to create false purchases purchase invoices showing tax paid by other firms means they create different invoices to get reimbursed to claim to the government and thirdly it says the problem of maintaining account because because it involves whole lot of maintaining accounts and formalities so it's really difficult and equally tedious so it says the problem of maintaining accounts cross checking becomes complex when the series contain a lot of exemptions and differential rates of taxation so this is the purpose this these are some of the you can see the drawbacks or the disadvantages of the modvat but it is created to support or to reduce the burden of the manufacturers so that instead of putting the burden at each level at the final stage they have to pay and the concessions are provided to them and even the reimbursements are provided to them this modvat is applicable to the producers who are making use of the raw material which are produced within the country and the producers which are making use of the material which is coming outside the country or which is coming from outside the outside of the country for that sen vat is applicable so this is the concept of vat and mod vat i hope this lecture has cleared up to an extent the idea of vat and mod vat just try to listen it again twice or thrice then you have a better and clear understanding of what it actually says and still if you have any doubt you can just let me know so i can clear it again and i can come up with more examples to make it clear so that's all for the day i hope you all had a great day keep smiling keep learning keep studying may god bless you all